situations and tensions. We see extremist dogma and violent ideologies gaining ground as moderate forces retreat. In today's world, we face many hostile forces as well as multiple and persistent crises which demand an urgent and appropriate response from both national leaders and grassroots communities. Mahatma Gandhi understood that a powerful idea could change the world. He knew that individuals working alone and together could realize what others might dismiss as impossible dreams. Inspired by Mahatma Gandhi's life of nonviolence, the United Nations strives, for example, to rid the world of weapons of mass destruction. As part of the UN's WMD campaign, we seek to raise awareness about the high cost of weapons of mass destruction. Recent initiatives and meetings, including the 2009 Security Council Summit on Nuclear Disarmament, have improved prospects for the reduction in global arsenals. But calls for nonviolence should not apply only to the use of deadly weapons. The United Nations and its grassroots partners have long campaigned to stop the human assault on our planet. Significantly increasing greenhouse gas emissions have been a consequence of this onslaught and now threaten catastrophic climate change. The UN Secretary General urges activists everywhere to turn up the heat on world leaders to seal a deal at the United Nations Climate Change Conference in Panama City this month and in Durban in December. Likewise, the appalling violence inflicted on women and girls throughout the world should also be at the center of our concern. An estimated 150 million women and girls are victimized each year. Rape is increasingly widespread as a weapon of war. Victims of sexual coercion are more likely to suffer sexually transmitted diseases, including HIV AIDS. The UN urges all partners to join Secretary General Ban Ki-moon's Unite to End Violence Against Women campaign, which is a multi-year effort aimed at preventing and eliminating violence against women and girls in all parts of the world, since no country is immune to this malaise. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, on this International Day of Nonviolence, let us celebrate and embody the legacy of Mahatma Gandhi by creating and sustaining a global movement for nonviolence. Let us end violence in all its manifestations and strengthen our collective work for a safer, greener, and more just and peaceful world for ourselves and for our children. We at the United Nations will continue to work in common cause with all people who share the UN's aspirations for dignity, security, and equal opportunity. I thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency, for the very enlightening address. And now, ladies and gentlemen, with much pleasure, I'd like to invite the past president of the Gandhi Memorial Trust, the eminent Dato Mahadev Shankar, to address this. I'll try and project my voice. Thank you. May the Lord be praised. If I may add to what you have already heard, I, on behalf of the trustees of the Gandhi Memorial Trust of Malaysia, would like to take this opportunity to wish all of you a very cordial welcome to this evening's event. Mahatma Gandhi 
was a barrister of the honorable society of the inner temple so was our first malaysia's first agong tuli yang mahamulia tuanku abdul rahman and so was tunku abdul rahman al haj our first prime minister also present this evening are a significant number of barristers both of the inner temple and the other inns of court led by none other than our chief justice emeritus young burbahagia tun zaidin bin haji mohammad abdullah the president of the senate tan sri abu zaha uja is also a barrister and amongst us there are other serving and retired judges and if i may depart from my script i was absolutely delighted to see coming in through the portals of this hall this evening my dear childhood friend tan sri edgar joseph and his wife agatha we both entered the inns together in 1952 and he preceded me by a few months in 1955 when he came back to malaysia to all of you barristers retired judges and judges may i wish you also a fraternal welcome a word of thanks also to the representatives of the media a special word of thanks to dr abdul ali raja mohammad for volunteering to exhibit this evening his prize winning portraits of mahatma gandhi which was awarded to him in an international competition held in delhi recently in my younger days in a phase of some dissolution i asked tun sambandhan the late tun sambandhan tun what is life and he replied in tamil actually kalyanam panni paaru veedu katti paaru in english it means go and get married and see go and build a house and see you will soon find out what life is all about to that list i would like to add a third go and organize a memorial lecture event like the one we are having this evening i cannot imagine a more exquisite form of torture <laughs> loss of sleep anxiety and everything which pursues us right until the moment i get up here to speak it is for this reason that i'm going to do something unusual it is not normal for the organizers of an event to pat themselves on the back <laughs> but the organizing of this memorial lecture requires me to do just that to the high commissioner of india who took a great deal of interest in how the proceedings were to be structured micro managed in fact the events we owe a special word of thanks and to his helpers uh, mr rajesh kapoor and his uh, assistant hari and his team but there is somebody else who towers almost above them i should say is our own dear mr radha krishnan <laughs> whose efforts on our behalf has well exceeded the call of duty 
and his secretary, Ms. Nazim Baby Ibrahim. What they have done, I, have, I can't find words to cover. Almost like Hercules taking the burden of the world from the shoulders of Atlas. And well done, brother, a man whom I have affectionately described as the poorest, unpaid, and most efficient diplomat of Malaysia. <laughs> to everyone else who has helped in any way, I wish to record our heartfelt vote of thanks. On the 30th of January, 1948, at the tender age of 14, I was in a wee little village in Kerala. When the news came in, not that night, but the following morning, that Gandhiji had been shot dead by a lone assassin in Delhi, and that he was a Hindu fanatic. The outpouring of grief that morning, which we witnessed by thousands of people who had gathered, I don't know where they came from, because I thought that village only housed a few hundred people. It's something I'd never forget. Now, 63 years later, I'm still tormented as to why so many apostles of nonviolence die such violent deaths. We are especially grateful to young Burbhagya, Tansri Hasmi Agam, and to young Burbhagya, Datin Paduka, Marina Mahatya, for coming here this evening to share their thoughts on this very vexed topic. Their participation bestows today's proceedings with a luster that it would not otherwise have had. Add to that our stellar chairman, Yang Burbhagya, Dato Dr. Yo Po Hong who will moderate the proceedings. So at this juncture, Master of Ceremonies, over to you. Thank you. May I now invite Dato Dr. Yo Po Hong and our two distinguished speakers, Yang Babahagia Than Sri Hasmi Agam Dan and Yang Babahagia Dadin Paduka Marina Mahade to ascend the stage and please be seated there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my next introduction also no, needs no introduction, actually, as his reputation too precedes him. Quite an easy job for me here this evening, actually. Nevertheless, deprive myself of the joy of introducing this prominent gentleman, I shall not. Ladies and gentlemen, chairing our next session will be none other than Dato Dr. Yo Po Hong. Dato Dr. Yeo is one of our most eminent orthopedic surgeons in Malaysia who has excelled both in his specialized field of orthopedics and also in distinguished public service. A fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons Edinburgh and a Master of Surgery of Liverpool, Dato Dr. Yeo is also a fellow of the Malaysian Academy of Medicine and holds honorary fellowships of the College of Surgeons in England, Singapore and South Africa. Among the many other public offices he has held, he has been the elected member of the Malaysian Medical Council since 1983 to date, and a member of the Technical Committee for the Accreditation of Medical Schools under the National Accreditation Council for the last 10 years. Times without number in the last three decades, he has been president of diverse medical associations in Malaysia. If that were not enough, 
He even sat as a member of the Royal Commission of Inquiry into the injuries suffered by Datu Sri Anwar Ibrahim in 1998. Another member of that commission was none other than our own Datu Mahadev Shankar, and it is felicitous that they have come together again today to promote non-violence as a way of life. Dr. Yo is currently the resident orthopedic surgeon both in Pantai and Asunta Hospitals in Kuala Lumpur. Dato, the chair is all yours now. Ladies and gentlemen, the second of the Gandhi Memorial Lectures is in session. A big hand for Dato Dr. Yo, please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. S. Radhakrishnan, the chairman of our Gandhi Memorial Trust. Tansri Tansri, Dato Dato, Your Excellencies and Distinguished Guests. Now, as we have heard, the life and philosophies of uh, Mohandas Gandhi has influenced subsequent generations of leaders of the world. Most recently, I believe, uh, declared personally by himself when questioned on who influenced him was President Barack Obama. Now, to, to, uh, in his absolute belief in non-violence, he has uh, said that there were many causes that he was prepared to die for, but no causes that he was prepared to kill for. The uh, understanding, the culture of peace, tolerance and non-violence as espoused by the uh, United Nations resolution require that we must all work very hard every day in order to bring these lofty principles to life. Today, we, the Gandhi Memorial Trust, celebrates the birthday of Mohandas Gandhi and play a small part in not allowing this important day to pass completely unnoticed. We are fortunate this year to have not one, but two eminent speakers for our Gandhi Memorial Lecture Series. Both speakers do not need introduction in this country, but for the benefit